Great. Well, uh, welcome, everyone. I'm Bruce Shackman. Uh, I'm the director of CHERISH, the Center for Health Economics of Treatment Innovations, Interventions for Substance Use Disorder, HCV and HIV, a long name, so we call it CHERISH. Our mission, which is uh, to develop and disseminate health economic research on healthcare utilization, health outcomes, and health-related behaviors, that is the NIH uh, definition uh, of what health economics is that NIH funds. Uh, there's certainly other funders who have a broader definition of health economics, and we are happy to talk to you about those funders as well and our experiences with them. Uh, but for the purposes of, of this, um, uh, this uh, training, that's what we're going to use as our definition of health economics. And particularly, we focus on health economics that informs substance use disorder treatment policy and HCV and HIV care of people who use substances. In this, our first five, we hope first, five-year cycle of funding from NIH, we particularly um, had an emphasis on increasing the impact of research that addresses the needs of integrated healthcare systems providers and payers. And we've really seen um, with the opioid uh, academic, epidemic a, a, a increased recognition of the role of non-substance use uh, specialists in substance use disorder diagnosis and treatment. And that's been very gratifying. I think um, the recognition that we just don't have enough capacity has been part of that. Uh, and so um, we have been um, happy to encourage health economics research that's focusing on those issues, which is not to the exclusion of other, other health economics issues, but it's been something that we identified um, three years ago when we got started. And uh, in your packages, I think you, you have um, Oops. Um, some uh, uh, issue briefs that our center has put together in collaboration with the Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics at University of Pennsylvania. And one of them talks about primary care and its role in the opioid use, uh, opioid epidemic, and particularly from a health economics perspective. So that's an example of work that we're doing, uh, summarizing work that we and others have done in that area. Um, uh, so our audiences include uh, a variety of people, a variety of researchers, many of whom I hope are represented in this very room, uh, people who are focusing their research on substance use disorders, people who are focusing their research on HIV and Hep C, people who have more broad health services research backgrounds but are interested in the substance use disorder uh, area and want to get more involved with that, and, and also health economists who have health economics training but maybe not training in the particular methods of economic evaluation that we're talking about today, as well as hopefully uh, people who are very much uh, involved in doing clinical trials. So one of the reasons, one of the main reasons we held this meeting, this uh, training today, is that tomorrow is the start of the NIDA-funded Clinical Trials Network uh, annual scientific meeting. Uh, some of you will be staying on for that, and we encourage you to uh, come uh, tomorrow morning uh, we will be doing a session, a workshop, which is open to all. It's not just open to people in this room, so encourage your friends and colleagues to come. Think about coming back if you're in the local area. It's open also to people outside of CTN. Um, and that workshop will be talking about our experiences working, doing economic evaluation alongside NIDA-funded clinical trials. Uh, two clinical trials, one of which has just wrapped up, the XBOT trial, uh, which was a comparison of uh, buprenorphine and injectable naltrexone, uh, and that was at the individual level. And one is that is just launching called the Proud Child, which is a system-level intervention uh, intervening with a particular um, primary care practices rather than at the individual level. So very different environments, and we'll talk about how we work alongside those. Um, and then also health systems researchers and data analysts, uh, people who have data, including, uh, for instance, in the Proud trial, we've been working with people from Kaiser Northwest and other places that have system level data, and then um, or we want to um, work with them on how to do a health economics research. We also have a, <coughs> excuse me, another set of audiences for our dissemination and policy work, including treatment providers and payers, policymakers at federal and especially state levels, uh, and patient advocates. Um, we have four collaborating institutions, uh, while Cornell Medicine, based in New York City, uh, where I am. That's where our administrative core is, our, our pilot grant and training core, and part of our methodology core. 
uh, Boston Medical Center, which is uh, where our HCV and HIV core is, and uh, um, several of our uh, investigators who are um, physicians, uh, either in addiction medicine or infectious diseases. Uh, University of Miami Miller School of Medicine, my colleague Catherine McAllister, who co-leads the methodology core. And then, uh, as I mentioned, we work with uh, University of Pennsylvania, Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics, which is where our dissemination and policy core is. Um, so this is our uh, team. Uh, and just uh, the top row, our, our folks who are going to be here today uh, as faculty, myself, Catherine McAllister from University of Miami, Sean Murphy from Weill Cornell, who heads our consultation service, and Dr. Ben Linus from Boston Medical Center, who will be flying down this morning. He was on service, so uh, he's just coming now. Uh, and then you can see several other of our investigators at Boston Medical Center, Penn, and uh, Weill Cornell, who are not here. Just a special shout out to Brandon Aiden, who heads the Pilot Grant and Training Corps, who worked very hard with our team uh, to prepare uh, this training, uh, even though he's not here. Um, and then our staff, our fabulous staff. Uh, oops, they, didn't, they went by a little fast. So um, Sarah Gutkin, Philip Jang, Jared Laff, and Michelle Pop are all here circulating around and will be assisting uh, you with whatever your needs are. And then also they will be running the um, Excel um, uh, interactive sessions uh, this afternoon. So, and then obviously we have a several other great staff members who are located elsewhere outside of New York City. Um, we also have a, a new program, a research affiliates program. I, we have at least one research affiliate here. Um, so this program has been uh, established um, for us to expand our reach beyond uh, uh, the four institutions. And these are people who have uh, are experienced health economists and have done some work in substance use areas primarily. Uh, and, or HIV and Hep C related to substance use, uh, and uh, we are reaching out to them. We'll provide. We're going to provide some some uh, some resources to them uh, and some training to them at that level. But we also draw on them as additional resources for our center, doing consultations and supporting new investigators who are coming into the field. Um, and in fact, we have. Oops a consultation service, and you have uh, in your packets a card that talks about this. Uh, and if you come out of this training and you decide you want to do something further in the area of health economics uh, evaluation research, um, but you just want to get, you're getting started, you're not necessarily that experienced, you want to think about how to do that, you can call on us through our website and get a free consultation following up on this. Uh, and there's a couple of people here who have been recipients of consultations and been uh, successful with them, so um, uh, you can talk to them as well. Um, people who are writing new grant applications where they'd like to include health economics, people writing career development awards, and they want health economics as, uh, uh, or health economic evaluation as part of that. Uh, and people who have projects where they're um, up and running but they want to add some health economics to it. So um, contact us through our website um, and we can hopefully help you. Uh, uh, this is just uh, a little bit more about what the consultation service does. We do an initial evaluation, uh, and then we match you up either with a cherished consultant or an external consultant, uh, and you, get, you can get up to one, between one and six hours of consultation by phone. Typically, they've been around four hours, but it varies. Uh, and then um, we have an online evaluation form. Um, we also have several resources on our website, and after you get finished with this training, hopefully some of these um, words will have some additional meaning for you as to what they are. Um, but there are, uh, there are uh, instruments that um, will show you some examples up through the training that you can then access through the website, or at least know where to go. The links are there. And then we have um, some other tools and fact sheets as well. Again, this is all on the website. 